Have you ever had it where you build the point perfectly, get your opponent on the run, have that easy put away ball, and then somehow still lose the point? In this video, I'm going to reveal a simple trick that you can use to make sure you win more points when you have that put away opportunity. We'll cover the theory behind it, some exercises you can use to practice it, and don't worry, this trick will work at any level, so it doesn't matter if you're an aspiring pro or a recreational club player. But first, let me show you what happens if you don't implement this trick. And for this example, I'm going to be using myself. I used to lose over 10 points a match when I would get myself into a finishing opportunity and I just wouldn't be able to put the ball away and somehow my opponents would work their way back into the point. And although it was painful for me at the time, I did create some good content to post because the rallies ended up being really long and it's actually quite entertaining to watch me never being able to put the ball away. And now over 100,000 people have seen me struggle to put an easy ball away. Anyway, it got to a point where it was affecting me winning matches and no matter how much I worked on my short forehands and my smashes, it wasn't really making a difference. That was until I realised what I had been missing all along and it had nothing to do with the way I was hitting my shots. The best way for me to explain this is through a football analogy. And I know we're all tennis players here, but stick with me. This is the best analogy that I could think of. Messi is arguably the best footballer in the world. One of the reasons for this is his awareness of everything that's happening around him and his ability to see where everyone is at all times. You can visually see this when he walks around the pitch and then suddenly starts running. Now in tennis, the very top pros have this same kind of awareness for what's happening around them, but it's not as visually obvious for us watching. That's because they're constantly hitting and recovering. We can't tell the reasons why they have decided to hit a shot somewhere, whether it be predetermined, intuitively, or because they've spotted something in their opponent. And it's that last option that the top pros do way better than all of us. They're able to spot tiny movements in their opponent's body positions to help them decide where to place the ball. And that brings us on to the trick of this video. I'm going to help you decide where you should place that finishing ball based on how your opponent is set up with their body. And it's all in their hips. Okay, so the specific situation that I'm talking about is when you're kind of like on the service line area and you have that short forehand and your opponent has to guess a side and they have to choose whether they're going to run across or stick where they are. So you have a ball around here and then you'll either go into the space or you go back behind and your opponent's got to choose where they want to go. Now let's say I'm the opponent and I'm the person who you've put on the run and I give you that higher short ball on the service line. It'll often happen where I've been off the court so I'll probably be somewhere here scabbing your short ball here or land quite high and I've got to make a decision just before you hit that ball whether I decide to run and try and cover this part over here or kind of stick where I am over here. Now what you've got to do just before you hit that ball is look at the angle of my hips. If my hips are facing forwards, front on here, even if I start recovering over this way, I'm more likely to stay this side and this is the side that I'm going to cover. However, if just before you hit that ball, I turn my hips this way, I'm not going to be going here, turning, running, and then back over here, scavenge that ball back this side. I'm more likely to go here. I might hold my ground a little bit here, just so you don't know where I'm going and then sprint to that side after you hit the ball. Now, the most challenging part for you to try and hit the winner on this shot or try and finish off the point with that easy ball is keeping an eye, one, on the ball so you can get that good contact point, and two, an eye on my hips. And what you'll find when you first start to practice this is you'll probably end up missing more shots because you're trying to keep an eye on me and the ball and then you just mess up the timing. That just comes with practice. And soon you'll be able to quickly take a look at how I'm set up with my body. You'll notice if my position forwards or if I'm positioned to move sideways and run onto the other side of the court, as well as knowing where the ball is and then making that decision. At first, you'll have to think quite hard about it, but then soon it will become second nature. You can just take a quick look and then get on the ball and know exactly where you're going to go. And that's what the pros do so well. And this is just one example of the small body positions that they're able to pick up on. Most of the time, they're probably not even realize that they do it. It just becomes second nature to them. But we've got to really try and train it and look at where the opponent is set up and then make that decision of where we're going to go. Okay, so the first exercise we're going to do is you're going to start with one player on this side and they're going to feed in a short ball and they're just going to stay and choose whether they turn their hips and run to the other side or try and dummy it and keep the hips facing forward and stay on the same side. Chinula is going to try and pick a side, look at the angle of my hips and then decide where he's going to go depending on where I'm facing. Okay, so I'm going to feed it on the service line and you've got to decide whether you're going to space or back behind. If the angle of my hips are facing forward, where do you go? Yeah, and if I turn my hips this way, where do you go? Okay, cool. I'm going to do one from this side and one from that side. We're going to keep alternating. Okay, so I'll just play one clip of us doing the exercise and then break it down afterwards. I think that'll be enough for you to understand how to do the drill and execute it in practice. 
Okay, so this is a good example because I made it as challenging as possible for Chinula by leaving it right to the last second to make my decision and turn my hips and run to the other side. Um, this is tough because he really had to pay attention right into the moment he was about to hit the ball to see what I was going to do and it ended up messing up his timing on the shot a little bit but he ended up picking the right way and it would have been a clean way in the match anyway. So what you can do is make your decision a little bit earlier and then gradually make it later and later and later and then when they have that one where it's left right to the last second they should find it a little bit easier having built it up as they've gone along. And then what you can do as a progression from there is literally just play the point out from that situation and what will often happen is you'll get another short ball and then you have to practice it's the same thing again to get even more practice with it so try this out and let me know in the comments how it goes